Revelations chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and get those out. We'll be breaking these verses down by phrases. If you have your Bibles, it'll be easier for you to keep up. Revelations chapter 5, verse 13 reads, And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him who sits upon the throne and, to, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. The phrase, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, means exactly what it says. The atoning merits of Christ's death will be universal, as the sin that affected the universe is universal. Paul addressed himself to this very thing when he said, For the earnest expectation of the creature, in other words, creation, waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the Creator, in other words, creation, was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of Him who has subjected the same in hope. Romans eight nineteen through 20. This means that creation had nothing to do with Adam's sin, but due to that sin, was made subject to its results. To be sure the animal creation and all creation for that matter did not willing participate in the fall but were subjected to its results just the same. The Holy Spirit through Paul plainly tells us here that the creation is going to be redeemed. It's part of the blessed hope Paul went on to say, because the creature, in other words, creation, itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, Romans 8 and 21. Here the Holy Spirit plainly says that deliverance is coming for the entirety of creation. And then finally, Paul said, For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. Romans 8 and 22. Before very long, these groans are going to turn into shouts of acclamation. We are plainly told in the passages as given by Paul that the fall had extremely negative effects on the entirety of creation. This refers to the animal kingdom, plant life, and in fact every part and partial of creation, including the weather patterns, etc. In this capacity, nothing functions quite right. It is very difficult presently for man, even righteous man, and I speak of the righteousness of Christ, to properly tell what creation was originally intended to be. We have nothing by which to compare that which is now to that which was intended and most assuredly will come. But we do know from the word of God that literally everything has been adversely affected by the fall. That what degree that affectation has taken place is not presently known. But of this one thing we can be certain, the fall was much more uh, horrific than possibly we could ever begin to know and thereby affected everything to a far greater degree than we can presently comprehend. We know from Philippians 2, 8 through 11 and Colossians 2, 14 through 15 that the death of Christ is the basis 
of the restoration for all of creation. This is the reason for the acclamation given to the Lamb in Revelation chapter 5. The atonement addressed every single thing that man lost in the fall. Now admittedly, we only have a portion at present of what those benefits actually are. Concerning that, Paul also said, and not only they, in other words, the creation, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body, Romans 8 and 23. Plainly and simple, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle tells us that as it regards the atonement, we now only have a down payment of all that Jesus actually did. We are waiting for the balance of that which is to come, which will take place at the resurrection, at least as it regards believers. Every evidence is that the redemption of the balance of creation awaits the second coming and the beginning of the kingdom age. At that particular time, the very nature of the animal kingdom will be totally and completely changed. Isaiah 11 and 7. The following is not meant in any way uh, to demean the resurrection, which had to be one of the greatest events in human history. However, not one time is the resurrection mentioned in Revelations chapter 5. The emphasis is strictly and completely on the cross of Christ, and because it was at the cross where Christ made possible the restoration of all things. Once again, uh, I exclaim, if the throne of God places such emphasis on the cross, then we in the church should place the same emphasis on the cross. The phrase, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him who sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So we started out with the phrase, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Actually says in the Greek, the blessing and the honor and the glory and the power. This not only refers to the fact that the fourfold praises belong to God the Father and unto Christ, but as well that God the Father and God the Son are the source of such. However, the emphasis is entirely on the cross. All of creation is thanking God, the Lamb, one might say, for carrying out this great plan which He did at the cross. The forever and ever proclaim the fact that Satan, sin, and sorrow, which are shortly to be put away due to the cross, will never again infest this earth or any part of the creation. Verse 14 reads, And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. The phrase, And the four beasts said, Amen. And in fact says truth and truth which will never change. With the Holy Spirit here giving us this through John, we must realize 
that these four living ones are the same ones who say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Revelations 4 and 8. So in effect, their amen refers to re, refers to the redemption song that was sung and the voices of the untold numbers of angels saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. So these awful creatures who exclaimed the majesty of a of thrice holy God also proclaim the truthfulness of what Christ had done at the cross. Their acclamation, although only one word, Amen, in effect, says, It is done. The phrase, and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him. So we started out. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him. Includes both God the Father and God the Son. The living creatures and the elders began the glory and praise. In verse 8, And as it is proper that it should conclude with them, that is, they give the last and final response. The phrase, who lives forever and ever. So we started out, and the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him, who lives forever and ever. Records the fact that not only is God eternal, but as well that what Jesus did at the cross will have eternal results. One can only shout, Hallelujah. Such is the picture, a picture of overwhelming beauty and glory. It is a picture which we can but very inadequately represent in words, but it is a picture uh, the reality of which will still surpass our boldest expectation. That kingdom shall surely come. Seal after seal shall be broken till the kingdom shall have been perfected. But it will come only through the power of the Lamb who was slain. In the church, therefore, only the crucified Jesus will be known and recognized, and only those who believe in him shall never be ashamed. And that concludes Revelation chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. And also that concludes Revelation chapter 5.